Hello, beautiful people of the internet. My life has just been really, really crazy lately, and um, I'll have to explain that in like a separate video. But I'm, I'm sorry for like the lack of uploading lately. Uh, but today we're gonna be talking about the new Pony Effect Butter uh, Balm Foundation Palette, and um, I'm just gonna try to get through all the important points quickly. So just like their lip palette, just like their Galaxy palette, Pony Effect is out again with yet another palette sort of thing and it's in it's a foundation um concept is just it literally looks like a tub of butter when you first open it you get like this huge it's actually a really decently sized mirror you get your mixing plate here there's two compartments where you can store a mixture if you want but you slide it open and when you first get this there is this like the protective light it really does look like a new thing of butter Uh, but here you've got the foundation, you've got concealer, a soothing balm, a highlighter, and a um, this, uh, contouring shade. And it comes in two um, shades, as you can see. This one is ivory, and this one is in buff. Probably can't even tell the difference on camera, because they're really not that far off, to be honest. Um, ivory is good if you're like a 21, in, if you're familiar with Korean shades. Uh, right now, my winter shade right now, so I'm uh, in ivory. It's a little bit, like, it's starting to get a little warm. It's starting to get a little bit more sun, so I'm starting to transition into, I mean, uh, I want to say tan, but I'm starting to get a little bit more color. So I'm kind of in between, but this one is still a little bit off for me. Buff is definitely good for maybe like if you're a 22 or 23 in Korea or Korean foundations. Now the foundation, palette costs 39,000 won and so it's pretty much the same price as like their cushions and with this release they also came out with a dual ended brush uh there's a buffing brush on one end um you know those toothbrush type brushes and on the other end there's a spatula to scoop out the product and this is sold separately at 19,000 won when they first came out I think there was there was a promotion where you can get it for free I think but um at least on the Mii Box website that's not the case anymore now my first kind of issue I guess is the fact that you pretty much need to get this brush because you need the palette in there unless I'm sorry I'm like it's the end of the day I was filming a music video all day so like my face is this is not even I'm not even wearing this foundation in this video but that does explain why I look a little bit crusty so I apologize for that but if you do have your own spatula or some way of um, scooping the products out and mixing them on this palette then you can use that this you pretty much need otherwise though so technically you would be paying like almost 60,000 won. I'll give you some information on the palette and it's kind of like the textures in here and then I'll do the demo later. You can check the info box below for all the timestamps and stuff if you want to skip around. In here, the foundation is definitely, just like the name, it literally, when you're scooping it out and spreading around, the texture is literally like butter. It's a cream, but it's extremely soft and when you're molding it and, uh, you know, it becomes very malleable. It almost like melt, not, it doesn't melt down, but it becomes more lightweight and fluffy as you're mixing it around. The concealer here is definitely a lot harder and a lot thicker. Actually, I wouldn't say hard. It's a thicker. Definitely, it's still a little bit malleable, but it's definitely thicker. But it's not as like hard as some other cream concealers that I've tried. The soothing balm in here is kind of just like a oil balm. There is a cream highlighter in here. The cream highlighter kind of is like a thicker and slightly like a tad bit dry version of the soothing balm but this one actually has like um shimmer in there it does have a little bit of an oily slip in it but it's definitely more um it's not as oily as actual soothing balm at first when you look from, at, from far away you think oh my god it's like this really glossy glowy shine but um it's clear really obvious that if you look at it any closer you can clearly see there's like actual quite noticeable shimmer in it which i'm not really a big fan of so um if you have textured skin like me, it's not going to be great. It'll definitely look much better on like smoother skin from far away. <laughs> and then the contouring shade in here is just like these ones. It's not as um if I'm comparing it to like their artistic found like uh you know makeup sticks. These are a lot more creamy and a lot thinner. The issue I have with the contouring shade though is that I mean you can see it's like quite, I guess, pigmented, but if you blend it out too much, then it pretty much disappears into the foundation. And that could be a good thing, it could be a bad thing. Good thing that, oh, natural, but bad thing though is that you might have to keep building it up. If you actually try to mix it into the foundation, it almost completely disappears, so you probably have to add a lot 
of it is the foundation. Um, but even then, what's the point if like it's almost gonna be unnoticed? We might as well just use it alone. Now, if you've seen the promotional videos for this, clearly it's obvious that um, you can get multiple skin finishes depending on what you mix. So according to their suggestions, if you want more of like a matte finish, what you do is you mix the foundation, uh, I think they said three parts, to one part concealer and you mix it and you get um, a matte finish. Uh, I In the demos, I did do a matte one and I did do a, like their, a glossy one according to their recommendations. If you want a more glossy finish, you'll mix the foundation with a soothing balm. Uh, I've seen some people mix it in the highlighter, but um, I've also seen on the official Pony Effect Instagram, they'll do foundation, soothing balm, and uh, this one, so I guess you can kind of deepen the shade with this one. But to be honest, well, I feel like when you mix the, the foundation with the darker shade, it almost turns gray, and it's a contouring shade, so I feel like it wouldn't make sense, like, if you want to deepen the foundation, you can do it slightly, but it, the undertone changes, so you might end up looking a little bit dirty if um, you try to mix too much of this to really deepen the foundation. I'll just mix the formula that I want that day, and I'll, whatever's left on the spatula, I kind of just spread on my face, and what you'll notice in the demos as well is that uh, a little bit definitely goes a long way. It's quite pigmented. It's not full coverage, but it's definitely pigmented to that where you... Because when I first saw that, I was thinking like, oh, it's expensive, but are you going to have enough product in there to last you a while? And I honestly do think there is. Like every time I do mix, I don't mix that much either. I still have a little bit left over, which is a good thing. So I like to use that little bit left over to uh, apply onto areas where I feel like I need more coverage. So I'll take my sponge, which by the way, will I'll explain a little bit later. Um, is my preferred way of applying it. A dry sponge, I'll, if there's any left, I'll kind of use it as a concealer. Now my main issue with these is the texture. The foundation, although it spreads quite easily, like because it's butter foundation, it's really tacky. And the problem that I have with that is that for this particular foundation, you have to think about it not just for oily or dry skin. But the first thing you need to think of is, do you have dry patches on your face? And the thing is, this foundation will make those dry patches really, really obvious. I think it has to do with the fact that um, a lot of the textures in here are quite tacky, and when you're applying the foundation on the, those dry parts, the tackiness kind of pulls the, the dead skin from the skin. I thought, oh, maybe it's because of the brush. You know, because, you know, you're kind of like, if you're using this kind of brush, especially, you kind of, um, you're kind of creating the exfoliation action. So yeah, it's gonna do that. But I noticed even with a sponge, I have to be very meticulous about how I apply it, and I would put this foundation in that category of foundation that's very like annoying to apply because you have to do it in such a specific way or else you'll quickly ruin your base and even then it doesn't even last that long. It'll be like six hours of wear for me before it like really starts to break down even with powder. The outsides of my face are actually a little bit um, more normal to oily while here like in the center my t-zone is obviously oily but I've been quite dehydrated lately so um, I've been patchy around here which I guess is a good thing to test for those dry patches. I have to say, it does not play well. You will see in the demo later and also like the clips of uh, at the end of the day. What this foundation is amazing at is actually filling in the pores and really creating a smooth looking canvas. And I swear, like from a bit of a distance, your skin looks really smooth. But the thing is only actually temporary, I feel like, because the foundation just doesn't last long enough on my skin that um, if any of my oil starts to come through, it quickly starts to break down and really doesn't, because there's foundations that will look nice and good coverage um, and everything, but it just doesn't look pretty on the skin. Like, it's kind of obvious that I have foundation on. With the matte version, it's not as impaired, but if I try to do anything glowy with this, although initially it will look amazing, it quickly, like, outside, I'll, be, I'll look in the mirror and I'll know that, like, oh, it's so obvious I have makeup on right now. And that's even with, like, thin layers. And the annoying thing is that because it is medium-ish coverage, light to medium, um, you can build it up but it, it's easy to build up the coverage if you're using more of the matte formula. If you're doing the more glossy version, uh, if you keep layering, it starts to like get patchy and starts streaky, getting streaky, and you have to like if you're blending it, it's like the initial layers start to like rub around. It, it's just really difficult. Also, before I forget, the concealer in here um, is better, I think, for around. If you're using it to individually, to, individually, if you're trying to use it to spot conceal, it's better for around the face. Under the eyes, it looks really dry. And I swear, I moisturize my under eyes, but it picks up like any dead skin there that I didn't even notice that are like completely invisible. I'm not wearing it right now, I don't know why I'm looking at it. And also the color is good more for on the face. If it's under my eyes, I need to use a corrector. If I use it under my eyes, it's okay. It definitely makes them look better, but it just looks gray under my eyes. So I wouldn't have to use a corrector anyway. And I will say this bitch, this crease is like a bitch. It's, it, although it smooths over at the beginning, 
quickly, like almost within me doing my makeup, sitting down. Uh, even if I set it, it creases so badly. And I think it has to do with like how emol- not emollient, how creamy and soft it is. Also, because all the textures are the same, if you can kind of think of like, um, nail polish, if you have like a layer of, um, if you've ever seen that hack, that, that hacks video where if you don't have nail polish remover, if you actually put another layer of nail polish on your nail polish that you already have, it actually softens the first, the dry layer already because it's introducing those ingredients in the end and you can actually wipe off the nail polish. You can kind of think of it that way. If you do your whole face right and it looks all right and before you powder and you try to contour or uh, highlight with these, putting it back on kind of like re-moisturizes the foundation and it slips and slides like super easily. So when I try to do my nose, contour this immediately just like slips and streaks and it just doesn't look great. So I have to like use like, the, I, I like to use the edge of this, um, Sponge because it's actually the perfect shape to dip in there. And then I have to like really carefully go on the sides. The way I like to apply it is I'll mix it with the spatula, I'll spread it, and then I'll use this side of the brush to really, in circular motions, push the foundation into the pores and around my nose and around me because I do have some pores here to get the foundation in there to make it look smooth. And then I'll use a dry sponge to kind of blend out the rest. I noticed that if you use a damp sponge, even if I wring out all the water, it's literally just like, there's no water in here and then it's, it's just moist. It causes the foundation to really, kind of like with your oil, it almost like, it's almost like it breaks it down and it turns it super streaky. And like, I feel like I'm not blending. I feel like I'm just taking foundation off my skin. So I have to use it dry or else it will take the foundation off my skin and then it just doesn't even blend and then I have to keep putting more on and the more I put on, like I feel like a little bit is still left on the skin, even if you're like kind of pulling off the skin. And so it builds up, but then it gets super cakey. Initially it might not look cakey, but then throughout the day it quickly, that's why I always try to use thin layers of foundation. Like I always say, because it definitely lasts longer. It's one of those ones where if you keep trying building up too much, it will just look, it'll be harder to maintain throughout the day, especially with oily skin. So let's move on to the demos real quick. As I'm applying, it'll give kind of give you more insight into how I feel about it, because I do give little comments here and there. These brows. Okay, so I'm going to be doing the matte formula, according to them at least. So I'm going to scoop out a little bit of the foundation. I don't think you need too much. And then a little bit of the concealer. Like, need that much. I'm just going to mix it. And because I have some extra product in here, I tend to just spread it on like butter. Now this kind of brush is really good for kind of buffing it into the pores. What I do is I'll, I'll buff it into the pores a little bit and then I'll spread it like butter. And it seems like what actually, it seems like whatever was on the spatula, even from mixing what I had on the palette, seems to cover a pretty decent area. But uh, yeah, I kind of just get it all over first. I don't blend it out too much. Right now I'm just spreading it. I'll take a dry sponge. And I'll pat it into the skin. I find that this way I get the best coverage because if I use this wet, it takes away some of the foundation because the uh, it just doesn't work well with the formula. And if I were to use the... Okay, I don't have any more on here, so I'm gonna kind of just tap in here. And when I use this brush, I feel like it shears it out a little too much for me. It's okay if you like kind of like a sheer coverage, a sheer rural coverage I should say, because it's more like a medium coverage. It's okay, but for me, I do like to, you know, actually cover some things. So there's one like really light layer that I think, and it's pretty decent, but you can still see a lot of my imperfections. I didn't really put any under my eyes because I don't like this formula under my eyes. It's too creamy um, and it, settles into like every fine line that I have. But as a base, it's not too bad. It's just that you're definitely gonna have to go in with the concealer after this. I'm gonna dip a little bit more in here and just one more layer in the center. What I also like to do is actually take the sponge itself and use that to apply. Again, with a dry sponge. Because even layering the foundation is kind of a bitch too. It just doesn't want to, it's weird because I'm layering it, but it's not, it's kind of almost taking away, like it will cover like 
areas of redness, I guess. But if there's like these acne scar, like pigmentation or like spots, it kind of just like doesn't want to cover them. But if I keep trying to build it up, it gets way too thick on my skin and then it starts to look cakey. Let me show you though uh, the concealer like on its own. It's okay. Although I prefer a color corrector because it doesn't really... It kind of just leaves it looking a little gray under the eyes. And I made sure I moisturized really well, but you can see that's a little bit dry on my chin. Alright, so there it is on one side with mm, a coverage that I guess I'm happy with. And as you can see, it's not too bad. It's really smoothing on the skin. Um, up close, it looks a little dry. But I look smooth now. And there it is all over. Not, mm, I don't know. It's like matte, like it feels matte, but you can see there, it's not like a glow or anything, but I think it smoothed out my skin so that when the light does hit my skin, there's a little bit of that smooth shine. But in terms of the texture, it's, it's matte. That is if you just mix the foundation with a concealer. I'm happy with this coverage, but this would be like a medium coverage, I think. If your skin is better than mine, then probably full. And here, I still actually have a little bit left. So I didn't really make that, I didn't mix that much to begin with, but I think it covered pretty much my whole face. Um, but with what's left on the palette, I'm going to mix a little bit of this contour. I honestly could just use this alone, but I guess to make it blend more with the foundation, and create more of like a natural contour. I'm gonna mix it in with the, whatever's left of the foundation. Scoop it up with this brush on the sides of my face. I don't. I really prefer to do the contour alone. I don't want, I don't, you can see like it doesn't really do anything because if I mix it with a foundation, it looks like it would be like a good contour color, but when you actually start spreading out, it's actually a really light color. There's not even really a, no, always, this is honestly why I just take the sponge and I just dip right in there. I just feel like it's too natural. And the way I see it, it almost looks like I don't know, it's alright. There's just some times where I feel like it almost gives the illusion that when I when it's all blended, it almost looks like I didn't put foundation here almost. But it is extremely natural. I mean, that's good, I guess. Alright, so there is like the matte foundation with some of the contour on, and it's looking decent. I have to say, still looking dry on my chin though. All right, let's make something more glowy. I'm gonna mix some of that foundation with the soothing balm. Uh, you see it right here. I didn't really make a dent in the uh, highlighter and the soothing balm in this one because I was testing the glowy one um, from the Buff palette. I don't know if you can tell, but you can already see from mixing here, you can already see it's a little bit more glowy than how it was um, with the matte. Same thing, I'm gonna spread it on. With the glowy one, if you want to maintain that glow, it's probably better to use a brush or the Beauty Blender or sponge damp. With this mix, I'm not actually adding any concealer, so you can kind of get an idea of what the coverage is with just the foundation. And it's still kind of like a medium coverage. You can, of course, you know, since you're allowed to mix however you want, you can mix the soothing balm with foundation with the concealer. Um, and I even saw on their Instagram that they mix the soothing balm, the foundation with, with the contouring shade. This, however, does slip and slide around a lot. So it's kind of be careful about the way you apply it. So here it is on one half of my face. I will use the concealer again though for my under eye. I really think the matte element comes from the concealer because mixing the foundation with the soothing balm, like I have way less dry patches coming up, but hopefully you'll notice that I actually have less patchy, patchiness and dry patches coming up um, 
than with the matte formula. I feel like you can think of the foundation as kind of like neutral in the finish, while the concealer has a matte finish and the soothing balm has a dewy finish, obviously. All right, so I've got applied on both sides of my face with the concealer underneath. From far away, it looks really pretty. Like, you know, you can kind of see it has that sheen to the skin, but up close, it doesn't really look smooth. And like I said earlier that um, applying the foundation, you get less like of the dry patches coming up, but still up close. You can see it doesn't really look pretty on my chin. It looks a little dry, which is weird because I've moisturized really well prior to doing my makeup. And just like when I did the matte formula, the concealer just doesn't look really smooth under under the eyes. It still looks crepey and um, dry, patchy, and it doesn't really conceal my dark circles. It kind of just makes them... I mean, it covers them a little, but it really looks kind of gray now. And then the highlighter, I like to just use my finger. This is the kind of formula that will move around with the foundation. Like, it will cause the foundation to budge and move around if you try to use a brush. If you saw my video about um, glass skin, I was talking about how if you're gonna be using a glowy foundation and then you wanna put highlighter on top, like liquid or cream, it has to be thinner and more moisturizing or emollient than the foundation you used before, or else if it's more matte or if it's more thick, then it's gonna cause the foundation underneath to budge. But using a finger with this one, it kind of enhances the glow a little bit more. You can actually just use this, um, you can also use this highlighter with the matte, like if you do the matte look, you can also use this highlighter because I feel like it all they all work together well. But again, I want to emphasize the point that this is, it looks good from far away, but up close, it kind of looks like makeup and it doesn't really look the smoothest and it just looks a little bit dry. And for the sort of more glowy, glossy look, I'm definitely going to have to set my T-zone under my eyes. Now, who do I recommend this for? I feel like the only types of skins that this will work really well for are people that have really smooth skin and don't really have much spots. You know, you pretty much have really good skin, maybe you have some redness, it will definitely cover that up. Um, you'll have a lot of a harder time if you have fine lines, wrinkles, and also it kind of exasperates, like, you know, spots that have like dry patches on top, or if you have dry patches in general. So I really do not recommend this for dry skin that's quite flaky. I can see it doing pretty all right if you have if you have dry skin, but you're really good about exfoliating your skin and you're using you know the right to like uh, acid toners and things to really keep your skin smooth. I think you'll be okay. It's just that if you have wrinkles, fine lines, dry patches, spots, pretty much any issue with your skin, I feel like it will just you'll have a hard time with it. And honestly, I per although you can get like all these sorts of different um, finishes and looks, you do get contour and highlight in there. I feel like it's just so annoying to like to have to mix my foundation. I prefer to just like pump this shit out and put that, put slap it on. If you have oily skin, it's gonna break it down real fucking quick, and your skin's gonna look really oily. If you do the matte formula, if you do that, like only mix the foundation and concealer and maybe the shading one, I think you'll be fine. It will hold up for a pretty decent amount of time, actually. But why not just buy like a separate matte foundation? Because if the matte mix is the only one that's working out for you, you might as well just get a matte foundation unless you're here for you know these two things here anyway I can see the good points about this and how you can customize your foundation and also by the way the, the packaging is super bulky I feel like there's all this space in here that's not being used I can see the good points but I feel like there's just too many bad points and how it's super finicky and like uh, the formula is super finicky that I don't think it's worth the price honestly although it is a fun product um, that is my issue with Pony Effect, is a lot of stuff can be fun and like, interesting, but some of the stuff like makes me wonder if they're skipping out on quality for like the fun factor of it. Although I have to say, if you have good skin already or decent skin, this is a really great product. It's just that it's not for me because I don't have the best skin. I hope you found that useful, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. If you let me beat the Kaburi, I'm on and down and drum door, so no, no, we all got suicide. Tip one. If you're new for this, you're new with this, you're new with this, you're new with this.